It's the week of the young child, and that means hey. that we want to give a thumbs up to early learning, to young children, to their families, and their caregivers, and their teachers, as we celebrate this week. Uh, sharing your time with little ones is really, really important as their experiences are forming the foundation for their learning now and later. My name is Leanne and I'm with the Topeka and Shawnee County Public Library. And I'm here today with some other familiar faces that you may know from the programming that we do in the Kids Library for Young Children. We are going to talk to you a little bit today about Every Child Ready to Read and things that you can do, five simple things you can do from home with your child to help them grow in language and literacy skills. Those are talking, reading, writing, singing, and playing. Each of our friends here is going to take a little bit of time to tell you more about the importance of these things uh, and to give some tips about how you can interweave these into your daily routines. So, Debbie, Tell us why talking to young children is important. Talking with children helps them to build vocabulary and to learn about language. Speaking and listening are the earliest of the literacy skills. They are the foundation upon which reading and writing skills will develop. Um, oral activities can easily be integrated into everyday life any time, any place, with no special materials. While you're buckling your child into their safety seat or changing a diaper, just start talking to them. And start talking with your child right from birth. Get in close, smile, and make eye contact. Explain what you're doing in words. Ask your child questions and wait for them to answer, whether that answer will be in the form of actual words or babbles or just facial expressions. Respond to the sounds that your child makes, like they were just as if they were using um, full words and full sentences. Um, Those are great recommendations, but I mean, having a largely one-sided conversation, that is so awkward. Are they really getting anything out of it? They are getting out of it more than you could imagine. Um, they're soaking up all that language and the attention. You are planting seeds that are going to bloom later on. Um, one thing that you want to do is teach your children to learn the names of objects, whether those be in real life or in books. So ask questions or point things out like, where is your nose? You know, we teach um, body parts fairly early on um, um, while you're reading a book. Point to the tree. Do you see that bush there? Look at those pretty flowers on it. Um, and while you're just doing the mundane things of regular life, like I'm going to put this sock on your foot. But first, I'm going to kiss your little toes first. Build on what your child says. If they say ball, say yes. Look at that big red bumpy ball. Give them some extra words to use, some descriptive words. Um, that they can um, add to their own vocabulary. Just continuing to build and build their language as they catch on. Even. Nice. Right. Um, You've got a finger play to maybe share with us? I do. Um, finger plays use rhymes and um, rhymes are especially helpful for developing um, sound discrimination. Um, being aware of sounds within words is fundamental to learning to read. Um, and this finger play is called Tommy Thumb. And again, no special materials needed except for your thumbs here. So we're going to go, Tommy Thumb is up. Tommy Thumb is down. Tommy Thumb is dancing all around the town. Dancing on your shoulders, dancing on your head. And dancing on your knees, then tuck them into bed. Oh, thank you. That was fun. I'd also like to say that um, it's good to plan for quiet times also. 
um, allow your child to babble and practice language on their own, free of background noise and uh, free of an audience. Just give them a chance to try things out. I would have never thought of that. That, that makes perfect sense. Practice, practice, practice. So, uh, Luann, tell us why reading to a child is important. Well, reading is the most important way to help your child to get ready to read. Um, anytime you open up a picture book, um, they ha it's so full of vocabulary that you don't hear in regular conversation. So picture books are great. Um, any picture book is gonna have words in it that you probably don't hear and explain those words to them if they don't understand what that means. Look, if you don't know, look it up. Um, but it's, picture books are just a great way <laughs> to, learn, to learn new vocabulary. So do you have any good tips for parents who are maybe sharing stories with children? Um, yes, um, I have here one of my favorite books, <laughs> one of my favorite books. It's called The Little Red Hen Makes a Pizza and it's retold by Philemon Sturgis. So you can start with just the book. You can look at the book and what's on the book and have ask them, what do you think this book is about? Like we have a hen, um, there's a cat and a dog and a duck and ha maybe have them give the title to the book. Maybe you've never read this book before, but start with the, the cover um, and you can open up the book, show them how to turn the pages. They can see that and they can see the title page. Um, and pretty soon they're going to be turning the pages for you whether or not you're ready to actually turn the page. Um, and they can see on, then you can show them how we re read. We read from the left to the right. So just showing them how the book works. Even at a young age, they can learn how to do that. Oh, so speaking of age, at what age should you start reading to a kid? Uh, at birth. Uh, the library has a plethora of, and you probably have at home, some board books. And they're probably going to want to chew on the books. And that's okay. They're made for that. Um, and those, those books are easy for them to turn the pages on to uh, easier than a regular paperback book. But start at birth reading and some people even start before they're born reading to their child. So you're making me think a little bit about toddlers. Toddlers are just on the move constantly. Do you really like, how do you read to them if they won't even sit still? Um, they're, they're, right, they're probably not going to want to sit still. Um, even if they brought you the book, um, they may not want to sit so they may sit there for a page and that's okay they may get up after that and start wandering around they may start playing but i would suggest keep on reading to them um use different voices because that might bring back their interest to the book but if if they don't come back that's okay keep reading because they're going to be hearing the language from the book and that is what is important so what about the kid who wants that same book read over and over and over. I mean, we're talking like 14 times this week alone. It could be 14 times a day that they want you to read the book, but, but that's okay. Repetition is great because they're hearing that language over and over again, and that is what is important. Very good. So Even if you, they make you crazy. <laughs> <laughs> What are some library resources that are available to people even today while they are um, stuck at home maybe because of the close, the library um, being closed or them maybe being at home for being off work due to the stay at home order? Um, well, of course we have our Dolly Parton Imagination Library that you can sign up for and that brings books into your home for free. Um, it's a great fun way to get mail because kids like to get mail. Um, but you can sign up and the children will get books um, until they're five years old. So that's a good resource. We also also have book flicks, which is great because it pairs a, non, a fiction book with a nonfiction book like Bear Snores On is paired with um, Bear Cub Grows Up. So they can get a little fun story and they can get some facts about something. Um, also, there's like Harold and the Purple Crayon and that's paired with um, where art can take you. 
so just fun books. And we also have Storyline Online, which are books read by actors and actresses like um, The Kissing Hand or Harry the Dirty Dog. Some just some fun stories. And they're usually pretty animated with their stories, so they're fun. Awesome. So that brings us to another topic. Kathy, talk to us a little bit about writing. I mean, oh. four and five year olds can't really do that. So what does this mean? Well, preschoolers don't really start out writing, but what we're gonna work on with them are their pincher grasp so that they can later hold, hold on to a pen or pencil or crayon. So we're talking about the two fingers and your thumb and strengthening the muscles there and in the rest of their hands so that they can later hold that pencil. Um, some of the things there are a lot of fun things that a parent can do with their child to kind of make it fun to do that. One of them is just as simple as a Q-tip and a little bit of water in a dish. You could put that, you could paint out on your front porch, dipping the Q-tip into the water and making squiggles on, on the cement. You could do that with a child who's maybe one to two. You could get a empty water bottle and cut up some straws and put those straws down into the bottle. That'd be a good way for them to practice that particular grip. Those are practical and not messy. No. That's now, a there's, plus. <laughs> there's also one of childhood's favorite toys, Play-Doh, that uh, strengthens the muscles in children's hands. They can squish it, they can roll it, they can pull it apart. All those things would be really good for them to practice with. So beyond strengthening their hands, let's say that they are actually starting to pick up writing utensils and starting to use them. Um, what does writing practice look like? Well, beginning writing practice is gonna look like a lot of scribbling to parents. Um, they're, they're just going to be experimenting with the, with the instrument and the paper to see what happens with it. Um, as they get more and more experience and their hand becomes stronger, then your, uh, the forms that they make are gonna have a little more control to them and they're gonna start to look like things that you might recognize. That's exciting. That kind of leads into that uh, little kid art that is so <laughs> um, Lots of fun. <laughs> So, do you have any kind of finger wiggling activities? As oh, I do. I thought we might all do uh, open shut them. This is a classic children's one. Open shut them. Open shut them. Give a little pop, pop, pop. Open shut them. Open shut them. Them. Lay them in your lap. Thank you so <laughs> much. So we're going to segue into uh, talking with Kyler. Anyone who knows Kyler is not surprised that we have asked him to talk a little bit about why singing is important. Good morning, everybody. Singing is is important and fun because you get to learn those early literacy skills while being active and um, encouraging movement. So that's pretty cool. Um, when we when we sing and, and think about music, um, it helps our child develop socially. It helps our child develop in mind. And um, it can make you sad, it can make you happy, it can make you feel anxious. All kinds of wonderful feelings are happening through music. Um, but overall they're learning language, motor skills, rhyming words, just tons of things are happening while we sing and listen to music. So I'm hearing you say that singing is really good, but then I also heard you say something about movement. So singing with dancing, what does that do for someone? That has your mind and your body working together. And I'm telling you, I've, I've had babies 
just newborn six month olds come to story time and I, they'll tap their toe and they'll smile and they'll tap their fingers and that's just a six month old. Um, but then all the way up to, to the older kids that enjoy story time as well. Um, when you're doing something like wheels on the bus or the, uh, going on a bear hunt, you are doing rhythm with your body and you are singing. So you're using your mind and your body. Lap, tap, clap, clap, lap, lap. Going on a bear hunt going on a bear so you're talking while you're clapping and, and i don't know how many bands you've seen professional bands that have a drummer that can sing but that is an amazing feat to be able to body all coordinated with those two things going on at the same time so wonderful things being happening there that takes a lot of brain power so yeah. do you have suggestions for parents then of like say a baby versus a toddler a young toddler versus an older toddler uh, baby, uh, newborns, just bathe them in music all day long. Just anything that you can possibly sing or put to a tune or even a chant, do it the grocery list. We're going, let's go outside and have a wonderful nature walk. So anything like that, and it could be a little bit better than that, but that's just off the top of my head. Just anything you can put into a little pattern um, and let them know that there's um, something's happening next and, and let's get excited about it. For the infants, um, you can use music for transitions, which is wonderful. So say you wanted to go to the bath, the, take, it's time to take a bath and your child's not ready. You can put it to Twinkle Twinkle Old Star. This was a suggestion. Um, uh, darn it, let's uh, <laughs> twinkle, twinkle. It's it. Let's go get in the bath where you can make a big old splash, something like that. So that kind of gets their mind thinking. Okay, it's a transition time, and we're gonna go do something else. And hey, all of a sudden this bath sounds fun. If you didn't like it, bath. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean that's a good way to entice them along. So what if I can't sing? What if I can't dance? What if I don't know any kids' tunes at all? Where do I turn? There's uh, several resources on the on the uh, internet, but the library has got a page specifically for singing. We actually, if you go to the library page and go to the preschool area, you will find these five elements of the um, Every Child Ready to, to Read week there. Um, and also you can download music through our website as well if you go explore it. Nice. So all of this is online and still available through the library. That's, that's fabulous. So Sherry, tell us a little bit about play. Well, play is the work of young children. And when you think about that, it's kind of like, what? But play is something that children learn great things from. They learn how to communicate. They learn how to problem solve. They even learn how to interact with others. When you're thinking about what play does that? Yeah, play does that. And play for your child might look different than for their peer or for a sibling. For your child, play might look like pretend ocean animals or play might look like blocks that they tap together. Play might even look like a box of crayons or a board game. Play can also be playing on the swing set outside. Play is everywhere around you. And the nice thing about play is that play lets you be your child's first teacher because you are your child's first teacher. The important thing to think about with play is keeping it child friendly and also keeping it safe for your child and for your child's development. Supervision is usually a very good thing. So give us a few tips and pointers on that. When I think about play, I think about um, how important it is to follow your child's lead. When you're engaged in play, that warm fuzzy for the parent is also a warm fuzzy for their child. The child learns that one, that they're loved, and two, they also learn that they are important to that caregiver. When you're in tune with your child, you're following their lead in play. So if what they wanna do is play with blocks, then you're not pulling out a paintbrush. You're playing alongside them with blocks. It's also important to consider something you've heard my peers say, and that is repetition. Take that puzzle apart and put it again, together again and again and again. Obviously your child is interested in that item and that's great to focus on that together. That makes me think of those towers that you build and knock down, towers that you build and knock down <clears throat> over and over and over. So those, those experiences are so important. They're fun for your child and they don't realize that they're learning 
but they are. It's also critical to their development to be engaged in play, and play can be as complex or as simple as a child or, or the parent chooses because they are their child's first teacher. So for parents who are hearing all this information that all of us have given today and that are feeling overwhelmed because it sounds like they've got five different things they've got to schedule time for, and boy howdy, they were busy enough already. Um, what kind of advice do you have for them? I would tell them to take a deep breath. Remember that they know their child the best. They are their child's first teacher. Their child wants to play with them. Their child wants to hear them read. Their child wants to write and, and doodle with them. Their child wants to sing and dance and be goofy and play. Their child wants to be loved by that caregiver. So for parents who are looking for resources on exactly that, on parenting methods, setting up routines, figuring out discipline, because let's be real, you got to do it. Uh, what does the library have in store for them? You know, it's really impressive the number of online items that the library has available to families. Um, everything from your favorite authors like um, uh, Dr. Becky Bailey to Dr. Sears, they're all available online. Um, go to the library's website, tscpl.org, and scroll through all the great resources that are available, and you can certainly pinpoint that you only want resources that are available online, and you'll find just a plethora of resources that are available for you to check out. Excellent. So talk, read, write, sing, and play with young children. Have fun with them and watch them just bloom like all of spring around you these days. Mm -hmm. uh, your library is a great resource to have at any stage of your parenting journey, but especially with early learning. View all of the resources that these professionals I'm surrounded by have uh, put together in lists for you and know that those are some solid recommendations. They are available in books and downloads, digital resources, and as web recommendations as well. Thank you for joining us. And again, woohoo! Week of the Young Child. Hey! Yay! Hey, make sure Yay. to check out our Facebook page as well. We got tons of stuff going on on the library's Facebook page. Mm-hmm. <laughs>